MuOS has released its new version, previously labeled version 11, which is now officially known as Beans. You can thank the MuOS Discord community for submitting and voting on that name. And no, I'm not calling it Moose Beans. I know you'll be very disappointed, Anazul. The image of the new version can be downloaded on the MuOS website, muos.dev. I will showcase some of the major changes, but the complete patch notes will be on the website. A heads up about the installation process. This version requires a fresh install by flashing the SD card with the new image file. So if you use a single card setup or have your save games on your primary card, back these up before flashing. The installation follows the same steps as the previous version. If you are installing this for the first time and need help, please check out my MuOS guide linked in the description. Okay, let's get on with the changes. After installing the new version, you will be greeted by the new default theme. I think it looks great, but I'm a fan of seeing all my choices in a list, so I'm going to change it back to the classic theme. If you want to change yours, go to the configuration menu, theme picker, and choose one that you like here. Oh, great. Would you look at that? Someone made a beans theme to go with the beans version. Disgusting. I will select the classic one and I'll show you how to import other ones later. Arch 64 is now the default architecture and should not only improve performance, but also open the door to things that require 64-bit architecture. One of those, being Portmaster, has now been able to be updated to use both 64-bit and 32-bit ports. So games like Stardew Valley and Bellatro are now on the menu, along with a huge list of other ports. I have tested a few of these without issue. The screen may be on the small side for playing some of these games, but if that does not bother you, then I have not found any other issues yet. Be aware that when you launch some of these games, like Stardew Valley, it can take 30 seconds to load up. So if you are just at a black screen, give it some time. A quick reminder that some of these ports on Portmaster are free and ready to play, while others require you to own the game and have access to its files. You will then need to follow the instructions located on the Portmaster website on where to put the files for that specific game. Another significant change is the addition of the standalone emulators for PSP and N64. The new default emulator for N64 is the Mupin 64 Plus external RICE option. What's good about this is that you get the performance from the RICE GFX plugin without as many visual artifacts as you get when using RICE with the RetroArch version. I'm using Super Mario 64 here to show off what I mean. This is how Rice looks on the RetroArch version. As you can see, there's a lot of flickering artifacts, and the lighting does not look right. And here it is running on the Boopin 64 standalone. You can see you don't get those issues as you did with the RetroArch version. The current downside is there are no working menus for the Boopin 64 standalone yet. But while messing around, I found some hotkeys that I didn't see documented anywhere, so I thought I would share them. Something to note is there are no visual cues telling you what is going on with these hotkeys. All of these hotkeys require you to hold down the menu button while hitting the following buttons I list. Holding down the right D-pad will fast forward. This is not a toggle, so you will have to keep holding it for it to keep fast forwarding. Hitting the Y button will save your state. Hitting the X button will load the state. Hitting up on the D-pad will cycle through the states. Hitting down on the D-pad does not seem to do anything. So you have to hit up on the D-pad to cycle through all the states. I have counted 10 and it will cycle back around if you keep hitting up. Hitting the A button will restart the game. So watch out for this one and then hitting the start button will close out of the game. If anyone finds any other ones, please let me know. This standalone improved my experience with the N64 games on this device. However, it will not make all games playable, as there are still some with heavy slowdowns 
and some that are still out of reach. This is definitely better than the stock experience. Even with the new N64 core they added, at least for the games that I tried. The standalone PPSS PP emulator will give you a good performance boost, just like the N64 standalone. It will not allow you to play everything, but it should bring the performance on par with the stock firmware, or at least close to it. I went to one of the most demanding games to compare the performance with the stock version, God of War Chains of Olympus. Here I am using the latest stock firmware version 1.1.0, and at first glance, the stock version runs better. But when I looked closer, I noticed that on the stock version, the frame rate was limited to 30 FPS, while on MuOS, the max was showing 60. So I checked the cheat section, and the stock version has the 30 FPS cheat enabled by default. So to make this fair, I turned that cheat off, and it ran as bad as I thought it would. I copied the PSP cheats from the stock SD card, and created an archive file, then used the archive manager to install it. I will post a link to that archive file if anyone else wants to install these cheats. I then enabled the 30fps cheat for God of War on MuOS. Lo and behold, it now performs about the same as it did on stock. I have not tested a ton of games, but the few that I have seem to have comparable performance now. I'm curious to know what your experiences are with it, so please let me know in the comments. The Beans update added two applications that work together for an easy backup and restore process. The first is the Backup Manager, found in the Applications menu. Here you can create backup files for your artwork, BIOS, config, and RetroArch save games. When you select one of these options, it will copy the related files compress them into a zip file that then gets stored in the backup folder on your SD card. You can then copy these files over to your computer for safekeeping. This will be very handy whenever the next update comes out and you want to back up your data or settings. You might be asking how you use or restore these backup files. That is where the next app comes in, called Archive Manager also located in the Applications menu. When you launch it, you will see the files that you have made with the Backup Manager. You can then run them here, and it will unzip these files into the correct folders. Note that this will not delete any files, but it will overwrite files, so just be aware of that when loading archived save games or states. The Archive Manager is not limited to just restoring these backup files. You can also make custom archive zip files for many things, such as backing up Wi-Fi settings or games. You can read more about how to make custom archive files on the moos.dev website on the Archive Manager page. The GMU Music Player has been added. You can place music on either SD card, just make a new folder for your songs. When you launch the Music Player from the Application menu, you will want to hold R2 and press up on the D-pad, which will bring up the help menu. You can then familiarize yourself with the hotkeys. When it says mod, this is referring to the R2 button. I'm not going to go through all the hotkeys here, but this is a nice little addition for people who want to listen to music on their device. Now I'll go over some of the quality of life and bug fixes. I'm going to kind of run through these quickly. You can now scan for Wi-Fi networks instead of manually typing in the SSID. You just hit the X button to scan for networks when in the Wi-Fi menu, and your network should appear in the list. When you add your ROM folders to the SD card, you can still name them however you want. But now MuOS will try to match common folder names automatically, setting a RetroArch core to them. This means games should work just right away without you having to set the core. You may still have to set this manually if your folder names are unconventional, or you can also just change the core at any time by hitting the select button while on the games list screen. There are now indicators for brightness and volume levels when you change them. The low volume bug has been squashed, and now your volume level will be saved upon reboot and shutdown. 
There are also some new options and advanced settings, including the option to boot with low volume or to swap the A and B buttons. The box art loading issue has been fixed, along with the real-time clock, daylight savings time bug for anyone affected by those. RetroArch has been updated to 1.18, and some of the cores have also been updated along with it. The last thing I will do is show you how to add some of the new themes that you can find on the Discord. First, you will need to go to the Discord, and then go to the Themes channel under Discussions. You can then browse around until you find a theme you want. Click on the theme and scroll to the bottom of the thread on the right, and you should find a link to download that theme. Because the Beans update is new, not all themes have been updated to the newest version. However, a lot of them have. Once you have the theme files, access your SD card, navigate to MuOS, and then the theme folder, and drag them in here. And that is all you need to do. You should now see themes show up on the theme picker located in the configuration menu. There are some great themes in the works, and I am looking forward to showing these off when they are done. As I was editing this video, a new theme just came out, and it has to be my favorite so far. This one requires you to install it using the Archive Manager, and then turn it on with the Themes Picker. There are many other changes, but I'm going to cut it off here. Again, if you want to see the full list, check out the patch notes on the website. This update has solidified my opinion that MuOS is the best custom firmware for these devices. It has fixed all the bugs that I had with the last version, adding the standalone PSP and 64 emulators and the fancy theme support for people who like something a little more flashy, has made this easier to recommend it to everyone. The only missing feature that might hold some people back is the lack of Bluetooth support. This is something that will be coming in the future but it is not here yet. All right, that's about everything I wanted to cover. Please let me know about your experience with the new MuOS Beans update. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.